In this video module, we'll be looking at uh, user-specified statistics in Simio. And user-specified statistics are very important to simulation modeling because uh, this is what the tool that we use to observe values that the simulation doesn't compute for this uh, automatically. We're going to use model 5.2 uh, from the Simio and Simulation textbook uh, as the basis for the examples that we're going to do in this video module. Model 5.2 is an abstract, or it's the second model, uh, of an abstract printed circuit board manufacturing process uh, that's covered in Chapter 5. And in Model 5.2, we introduce the notion of rework that we see right here, and also uh, worker schedules and failures. For the video module, we're not going to consider worker schedules and failures. Our focus instead is on incorporation of user-specified statistics. In a subsequent module, video module, uh, we'll cover these basic topics of worker schedules and failures. So let's look at our baseline model that we'll start with. You can see that, um, let me just run this, and you can see we have a source that creates entities. Entities go through a placement process where components are placed on the printed circuit boards. They go through an inspection process where the boards are inspected. There are three possible outcomes. Either the boards are good, in which case they're shipped. They're bad, in which case they're scrapped or they require rework, and so they go through a, a rework process uh, and are then subsequently sent back to placement uh, for additional processing. So we can think of this rework step as pulling off the components that were placed, and then you route the boards back through placement. The routing is done probabilistically, so you can see that 8% of the boards coming from inspection are, are deemed bad, 66% uh, are deemed good, and 26% uh, go through rework. A couple of quick modeling notes here. Note that we have incorporated uh, status labels here so that we can count, or that we can d uh, display the number of, of bad boards and good boards that go through the systems. And so we s use the expression uh, sync name, which in this case is bad, dot input buffer dot number entered uh, to display the number of, of boards. Also note in our rework step that we have move the input and output node. So when you look at a standard Simio server object, you've got the input node uh, on the left side and the output node on the right side, corresponding input buffer and output buffer. And we simply switch those in the rework so that we could route the entities around. And so you can see that these things are not intrinsically tied uh, to a physical location when you place the object instance, and you're free to move those around. And that can really improve the look of, of the model in many cases. So our interest in this model is in two uh, statistics that are computed. The first that we're interested in is the time that boards spend in the system. So time in system, sometimes referred to as TIS. The second one is number in system, NIS. And so we're interested generally in when a board arrives. Let me go back to my model here. Uh, when a board arrives, we want to record the time between when it arrives and when it departs so that we can have an idea of how long it's spent in the system. Similarly, the numbering system involves the system as a whole and just tracking over time how many boards are in the system. So note that Simio collects these two things for us automatically. So if I line, let's just go to the run conditions. Note that I have the run set for 100 hours and I'll just fast forward to the end and then look at our results and we can see we have this model entity uh, category here and within the model entity category we have the average and maximum numbering system and then the average maximum minimum and number of observations for time and system so these things are computed for us uh, automatically uh, within Simio. Also note that I can set up an experiment, which I've already done here, and I have 10 replications, and I created two experimental responses for those two values of interest to us. So if I go to number and system, or what I have labeled here as NIS, we have created see if I can get this uh, expand a little bit. Let's see, there we go. And so we've just used the default entity dot population dot number and system dot average expression. And for the time and system, we have that same population. So we have default entity dot population uh, and we have time and system average. And so when we run our model, of course, as experimental responses, 
uh, we get the average value here that I've specified. We can also look at those if we want to see the pivot grid. We want to see, say, the distribution of number and system or distribution of, uh, of average time and system. We, uh, we have that to, available to us. And if we go to, let me go to the pivot grid and change back to the default view. I've filtered the view down to our queuing metrics of interest of which number and system and time and system are uh, of interest. So let's jump back into there. And there is our average uh, number and system and our average time and system, along with the uh, confidence interval half widths, uh, the maximum uh, and the minimum. Also note, and we'll come back to this a little bit later, that for the time and system, we also have two additional observations because Simeo by default computes time and system for the population based on entity instance and also the time and system for entities that go through a particular sink. So we have actually three different values. We have a time and system for the overall population, which is 1.1543. We have a timing system for the uh, entities that went through the bad sink, which is 1.2585, uh, and the timing system for the entities that go through the good sink at 1.1411. So we have these three different observations, and in this particular case, these should be three observations of, of basically the same population, since we don't differentiate between good and bad boards. And I think if you ran the model long enough, you would see that these three values converge. And that's something that you should definitely do uh, as you work with this model. So that, that's the system that we'll be working with. And in the subsequent videos, what we'll do is we will replicate these two um, statistics uh, manually so that we can see exactly how these work. And we'll also uh, create modified versions of these so that we can see how and where user-specified statistics uh, would come into play for a system like this.